guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. This is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, first, my audio, audio is going to be a little off. My old microphone broke. I put in the new one, but my amplifier for it is not in yet. So I have to boost the heck out of this digitally. So if it sounds a little bit off, understand that's only for another day or two. Then I'll be back to normal. Uh, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about why... A lot of guys that might have been, or uh, let me put it this way, a lot of guys that are red pill guys or guys that have kind of understand that the dating world is different than the way they, they first believed, which is if you grow up, you make a good salary, you're a nice guy, you're a stable provider, you should be able to get married and have a family and be happily ever after. Well, if you don't believe that anymore and you've kind of taken what we like to term the red pill, you've woken up to that's not the way that's not how things actually work. But a lot of guys still say, hey, I want to date. I want to go out there and meet a girl and have an opportunity to, to still date and maybe have a long-term relationship. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing another video on maybe some places you can go to get some dating advice with some other YouTubers and some other guys in the manosphere. That's not the point of this video. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I don't think that actually works very well and how things have gotten so tipped around. I'm going to bring up an image that I want you guys to look at. This is a, an image from a dating profile. And this is a, a young lady. She's 22. Um, from what I can tell of this photo, uh, uh, it's something that someone else posted, so I don't have any other photos. But if you look at her, her arms are a little bit bigger and not very well defined. Um, so I don't think she works out very much, and she may be a little bit heavier than average. But the point is, she says, I may not be the prettiest or the funniest, but I'll gag on your trouser snake with full intent of killing, of ending myself. So what more do you want? So basically, she's putting it out there as, look, just show up. I'm not pretty. I'm not funny. But I will do, if, if we match up, I'm in. I'm in. We'll fool around. We'll do whatever. Now, I'm going to give, let's just for sake of argument, let's give this girl a five, average, or four, whatever you want. But what happens when you're a guy that's in the dating world, and let's say you're a seven or an eight, and you know that if you try to hook up with a seven or eight girl, it's texting, it's playing games, it's being interesting, it's coming across as flirty, but not too forward, and you got to make sure that you show her that you have a high value, and you're the blah, 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 blah. It's a lot of work. But a guy that's just laying on his bed, that's looking for a little bit of easy action, would look at her and go, eh, she looks like she's got a big... Big bobs, she, that'll be easy. Eh, I'll swipe on it, see what happens. Hey, it's a match. And this guy that may be three, four rungs higher on the ladder than this gal can say, hey, you want to hook up? And she looks at him and she goes, wow, he's hot. He's good looking. Uh, seems to have a pretty good job. Yeah, I'm in. He, roll he rolls over to hers. She rolls over to his. They do the deed and he bounces. It's better than his hand. It was easy, easy pickings. Well, that guy may not have very high standards, but in the same token, he's not looking for a girlfriend. He's looking for a little bit of fun. And she just she puts it out there just as easy. It's a lay down for him. Well, he would put no effort into this versus having to play game and work really hard for another girl for weeks. Or maybe, maybe he's doing both. Maybe he's contacted this good-looking girl, and maybe he's just a little bit better than average. But he's got a good job. He's got some finances. He's got some game. He's taken some courses on, on good ways to keep a girl's interest and talk to her. So while he's playing game with that girl, he just gets a lay down like this. Now, what if you're on her level, a five or a six, and you try to hook up with her, even though you've got some game and such? She's going to say, well, this guy's funny and interesting. This guy's really hot. Uh, maybe she does both. But do you think you're actually going to be able to date her? No, because she looks at you and says, well, you're average. But this other guy showed interest in me. This other guy wanted to sleep with me. This other guy said he found me sexy. So I'm going to, I can be with him, but I'm not going to settle for a guy that's down here. I'm not going to date this guy. I want to date that guy. Yeah, we only fooled around a little bit and then he bounced on me. But I get that kind of attention from those guys all the time. And I'm, I, I'll, I'll jump in bed with those kind of guys all the time. All I have to do is convince one of them to date me and I'm homemade. I got, I got a great guy, attractive guy, successful guy, and he's all mine. So what happens? That's, she keeps shooting for that. In the meantime, she just gets you know pumped and dumped, and it never happens for her.
But what if you're the average guy that says, okay, I'm a five, she's a five. You know, this is the type, why doesn't she find me attractive? Why can't we make this work? It's because she's gotten attention from these other guys. Now, those other guys in the meantime, like I said, maybe maybe rolling the dice with a seven or an eight or a nine, working on getting some action over there, but he's spinning a plate, keeping this one on the hook just because he can hit her up in the middle of a Thursday when he's bored and wants to get some and say, hey, I want to come over. You, you up? You down? You good for this? And she'll be like, yeah, heck yeah, because he's several steps higher on the rung. I want to read a, a study, and it's it's from it's 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 from a the New Republic, but this is a study that they say is taught in psychology. And I want to read through this so you guys can kind of understand the concept that we're talking about here. It says psychology and human behavior students are taught early on about the famous 1978 study conducted on the Florida State University campus, in which volunteer male and female subjects approached other students of the opposite gender and recited a carefully scripted proposition. I've been noticing you around campus and I find you to be very attractive. Would you like to go to bed with me tonight? Now listen to these numbers, right? The subjects were neither particularly unattractive nor extremely attractive. Just average. We'll call that a five, like like I said. Which is to say they were pretty much the kind of partners most people do wind up going to bed with. The women's success rate when they made this pitch was a remarkable 75%. Three quarters, three out of four men said, sure, because they had to put in zero effort. They find, found her to be average or slightly better than average. They had to put zero effort in, and they got lucky out of it. They got some action, 75%. Uh, let's see, though no subsequent roles in the hay actually took place, at least not under the aegis of the study. So maybe it did happen anyway. The male volunteers succeeded with this approach precisely 0% of the time. The male volunteer success uh, it says remarkably, the psychologist repeated the study three more times throughout the 1980s, even when the AIDS epidemic made casual uh, intimacy seem like moral mortal folly. And about 50% of the men were still completely receptive to an anonymous hookup. So now when you look, we look back at this average person here. Again, I'm going to call her average. You can think she's less than average. That's not my point. But you take a look at something like this, and basically what she's saying is, hey, if we match, I'm saying I find you attractive, and I'll do these nice, naughty things with you. A guy may look at her and go, eh, all right, I mean, it's a lay down. Swipe. Now, what kind of chance does that give a guy that's not as good looking when she gets attention from these other guys? Even if you're in, and you know, if when you look at some of these other coaches that say, hey, if you learn about body position and you learn about talking game and you learn about coming out there and, and ways to keep her interested and ways to be funny and ways to be this and ways to be that, maybe that at some point, maybe that will get you that girl. But you're having to put forth a Herculean amount of effort to get somebody that's equal to you. Whereas the guy that's, maybe a little bit better looking, a little taller. Maybe he's got natural game, whatever. Maybe he's also taking some courses that teach him how to play game. He's going to have an easy time with this one. So then men are left with a choice. Either A, it's, it's almost an insurmountable mountain to get attention, to try to keep their attention. Because even if you are got great game and you've got your life together, if she's getting, if she puts herself out there because she's bored and she's got good looking guys that are just thinking she's a lay down, and they say, sure, I'll swipe on that. She's going to look at you and say, you know what, you're, you're good. But I see better. And they're interested in me. What she doesn't understand the difference is that you would take care of me as a boyfriend. He'll only take care of me for the night. But I'm pretty sure with work, I can get one of these guys to wife me up or to date me long term. They continue on here. In the, re in the real world, this pattern holds even when the women is manifestly bad news, narcissistically or otherwise. Someone with volatile moods or a turbulent romantic or personal history. It's not for nothing that these terms, the term hot mess, has gained such a linguistic currency. Capturing as it does the Lindsay Lohans, Amanda Bynes, and at one time the Kate Mosses of the world. Beautiful, captivating woman who also, at least for a while, believe behave in ways that lead to their own undoing. Men can often spot this and none, nevertheless respond with overtures all the same. Women may react to charismatic bad boy men in much the way men react to bad girl women, even if they're not nearly the same pushovers. 
Multiple studies have shown the seductive power of what's evocatively known as the dark triad of personality traits, narcissism, impulsive thrill-seeking, and Machiavellian, Machiavellianism, or exploitativeness. Men who score high in any of these traits, to say none of those who score high in all of them, which some do, also tend to exceed other men in the number of encounters in any given week, month, or year, uh, bedroom intimate encounters in any, in any given week, month, or year. At a conference convened by the Human Behavioral and Evolution Society in Japan in 2008, Peter Johansson of New Mexico State University, who conducted one of the studies, evoked James Bond as the perfect matchup of all dark triad traits and the successful um, bedroom activity that goes with it. He's clearly disagreeable, very extroverted, and likes to try new things, including ending people and new women, um, Johansson said. The headline for the story of Johansson's study in the UK paper, The Independent, was Why Women Really Do Love Self-Obsessed Psychos. So, you know, here's the whole point of this, guys, is that if you are, if you're an extrovert, a narcissist, somebody that has high confidence, whether falsely inflated or real, you know, whether you really do have a lot to brag about or you don't, but you just portray yourself as that. If you really believe that in yourself, you have a lot more success with women. One of the thing that a lot of these online coaches teach you is how to exude that, how to be confident and cocky and have body posture, body language, your wording, your voice projection. They teach you things like this. I've read The Game by Neil Strauss. Um, there's The Rational Male by um, uh, Rolo uh, Tomasi. There's many books out there that can help you with this stuff. And if you're really interested in dating, I, I think you could look up into it. But remember this. You're, if you're a, an average guy of five, you, you're not competing to try to win the five. She's going to want to go with a seven or eight. Maybe you're lucky enough to get one that's a couple rungs down at a three. If you're the seven or eight, yeah, you can try some game with a seven or eight woman, but more than likely you're going to have a much easier time getting the fives and the sixes. And so what happens is that women think they are dating up, but they're not. They're just sleeping up. And guys are sleeping down, but they're not really dating down unless they want a long-term partner with easy access to the intimacy and bedroom fun. So what happens is it now becomes pretty much a hookup culture where the sevens and the eights will try to hook up with other sevens and eights, but those women are all after the tens. The tens have everything down below them. The seven and eights men are having easy times with the fives and sixes, and they're still trying to chase after the sevens and eights. The five and six guys, they, they're, you know, now they're having to look down below average because the women on their same level are going up, dating up, because, you know, these guys are, are very good looking, are very successful, have good game. And, and so it, it becomes a, a large amount of work to try to become um, dating on your same level which means if I'm a five or six or whatever, and I want to date a five or six, I've got to put out the game. I've got to put out the status and the looks and the popularity of a seven or eight guy, even though I'm only maybe a five because I'm not competing with other fives. I'm competing with the guys that are sleeping down with her and, and having an easy time and a fun time. And she's thinking that's going to be my next boyfriend. You know, if a girl like this puts that out there, like she did saying these things, and, and saying, look, just if, if I think you're hot, we're going to hook up. And a guy that, that's got it going on says, I'll do it. That's her new normal. If a, if a woman sleeps with sevens and eight guys constantly, she's going to think that's her value, even though it's not for the dating value. The dating value is going to be a five or whatever else. But that's how it all gets twisted out. So guys, in my next video coming up, I will leave some, some interesting links for you guys if you want to look into how to get dating because I know you've asked me that. I don't believe in it anymore because I don't believe in putting forth the effort it requires to, to date somebody. I got better things to do because in the long run, I don't think healthy long-term relationships exist that often. They do exist, but it, it takes an incredible amount of weeding out and vetting and luck and time and money and patience. I got better things to do with my life. But for those of you guys that still want to do that, I'll put something together for you and where you can go because I'm at least looking out for you. But I'll also say by the end of the day, by the time it's all said and done, I think you're going to be putting a lot of effort into something with very little rewards. Guys, if you'd like to support my work, links are below as always. If you have, thank you very much. 
And the best way you can support me is like, comment, share, subscribe. Guys, this is Better Bachelor. I'm Joker. And remember, it's an uphill battle. No matter who you are, just to date even, just to have intimacy even with you is almost impossible. You're almost always relegated to going down. Thank you.